Hello and welcome to the Wildlife Moto channel. So today we're going to do something very YouTube-y. We're going to do a proper unboxing on the channel and I think this is the first time I've ever done such a thing. So this is exciting. We'll see how terrible I am at this. As you can probably tell from the title and the thumbnail on this video, this is a torque wrench from a company called Norbar. And there's a couple of reasons why I wanted to make this video. One, Norbar are just a really interesting company. So there's a lot to kind of talk about in terms of what they do and where they came from. And also, I just think not enough people know about this brand. They are heavy hitters in the niche world of torque wrenches, believe it or not, such a thing does exist, but not a lot of people know about them as in the kind of general public. So I definitely wanted to shine a little bit of a light and uh, talk them up a little bit because they're good. Okay, so before we get into the unboxing, let's give you a quick whistle stop tour around my world of torque wrenches so far. This is gonna be fascinating and quite short, so you'll be pleased to know because I don't have all that many of them. I've actually got a really big Teng tool torque wrench for doing big fasteners. I got that fairly recently. I think that's 40 to 200 Newton meters. There's a shot of it here. Pretty useful for a handful of fasteners on a bike. And I've had this one for a very long time, years and years and years. I'm wondering if it's as long as seven years. It may well be. It's been, it's been a while. And back in the day when I got this, I invested accordingly based on the fact that i wasn't doing a huge amount of stuff that might involve using one very very occasional stuff if i was i don't know cleaning a brake caliper or something like that and needed to fasten it up properly i was aware that i should use something like this but you know i just wanted to get something cheap and cheerful to get the job done and this certainly was that i think it cost about back in the day it was about 30 odd quid or something like that i think they're about 40 now something around that ballpark and it's a very straightforward simple affair fantastic range for motorcycles ranging from 10 to 80 newton meters however i would caveat the hell out of that and say this thing is all but useless at anything under about 20 newton meters and that is just because it's well torque wrench is inherently uh, a, a fairly inaccurate around their minimal settings. And that's just because at that point, you haven't got a whole ton of tension on the spring. The way these things work, the more you wind them up, the more tension you're putting on a spring inside here. And then there's a pivot block, which kind of acts like a, a bit of a clutch, if you like, which pushes up against this inner beam. So you see here on the head, we've got a beam that goes in probably about that far, something like that. And it pivots on this pin here. And then you've got that pivot block inside here, which has got tension pushed against it from this spring. So the more tension that's on the spring, the more tension on the pivot block, the more torque it takes for it to break free and, and basically pivot. And as it pivots and comes off the block, the inner beam here clicks up against the side of the handle here and you get the click. Now it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the, the fundamental principles, if you like, of how these things kind of work. So it does mean that right down in the very minimum settings, often these things are A, not very accurate. And in this case, it's almost impossible to actually know if it's clicked because the, the build quality of this thing isn't great. So you can hear a lot of jankiness all over it. So sometimes you're doing up a fastener and you're not entirely sure if it clicked or if it's just getting a little bit bound up and notchy. So this thing's going to get retired, but I have to say it has served me well. It was a good, good, good little investment, but I'm doing more and more of this kind of stuff now, getting into just spending more time building bikes and stuff like that. I'm not saying I'm any good at it, but I'm just doing it more often. So I figured it would be worth stepping up uh, my torque wrench and getting something a little bit better. I've also spent quite a lot of time using this one from SBV Tools and I'll continue to use this because I really like this. I think it's fantastic, especially for uh, fasteners with a lower torque spec because as I mentioned with the click style, you do need to have a kind of minimum pressure on that spring to get to get it to, to click and actuate properly. Whereas things like this, it's not mechanical, it's all electronic. So it doesn't have that um, what's the word for it? It doesn't have that shortcoming, if you like. And the great thing about it is you can turn any wrench or ratchet into a torque meter simply by connecting it there. 
and then you go ahead and put your socket on the end and I really like this trace mode that it's got currently set in so it will always tell you where you got to on a fastener so I think the target is currently set to 1.5 so as we get up to let's just reset that there you go so 0.5 six seven eight nine one there we go 1.5 and it shows you that you got bang on the money so that's also really good just having that kind of trace mode there so that you can be sure that you you hit what you thought you hit so these have their benefits the downside to systems like this is obviously we need batteries and they're quite big and chunky so no good for getting into very tight spaces unless you want to use extenders and stuff like that so they can be a little bit of a faff but i'll keep this because i think it's absolutely fantastic there's a full video on the channel on this if you want to know more about all its settings and stuff like that so let's get into this unboxing then and see what this tool is all about So we're going full, full unboxing here. We're even, we're even doing the uh, packaging that it came posted in. No shortcuts here. Oh, we're straight into it. No inner box or anything like that. Wow, okay. So first impressions, it's a nice box. Good quality plastic box. As you can see, this is the Pro 50. And the, I think there's a, there's a whole series of different pro and then a number and that number tells you the, the kind of maximum torque that it will uh, deliver in terms of range so this one is 10 to 50 newton meters which is perfect for me because as i said earlier my teng tools picks up at 40 and goes all the way up to 200 and that's often the case with torque meters you do need a a range typically speaking although this pop lock here goes all the way up to something like 200 and something or other newton meters it goes it goes pretty high but for these kind of click styles you, you probably need two to three so that you've got all bases covered a really tiny one for very um, lightweight fasteners something that will kind of get more into kind of inch pounds range and then uh, something like a 10 to 50 and then you know my 10 to 200 pretty much has all the bases covered on my bike so let's pop it open and see what it's uh, see what it's like. Okay, so this one has a three eighths inch drive, and um, most of my sockets are in that kind of range. So um, that's got me pretty well covered. And then let's see what's inside here in terms of paperwork. So this is the certificate of calibration, which means that this specific torque wrench with this specific serial number as tested by Mr. R. Byrne, has tested it in three distinct settings. One on the minimal setting, 10 Newton meters, then a, another test at 30 Newton meters, a final test at 50 Newton meters. And we can see that the accuracy varies a little bit depending on the range that it's being tested at. So at 10 Newton meters, it's accurate to within three points four percent and four point nine six percent and one point one eight percent and three point three five percent and then 0 0.77 to 2.48 percent i don't actually know what relative expanded uncertainty versus relative uncertainty interval is probably need to um look that up but it's a pretty thorough test we've even got the temperature on here the humidity all that kind of stuff the model that it was uh tested on so uh so yeah that gives you a little bit of peace of mind it but it, you know all these torque wrenches um even i think my cheap one came with a certificate as well so a lot of them do it's good that you get it with this one but it's not it's not unusual um and not necessarily a sign of um an amazing quality torque wrench but it is it is good to see so norbar are as i said a pretty interesting company you'll see here that it says made in the uk 
that's an unusual thing to see on a tool these days. It is. It's made in Banbury, I think. I'm pretty sure they make them in Banbury. And the name Norbar comes from a part of Banbury called North Bar. I don't think they're actually there anymore. I think they've literally just moved up the road. But uh, that's where that's where they were founded. And they've they've been there for the past 80 years. They've been around for a very long time. Now, the company was set up uh, to create torque wrenches for the war effort in the midst of World War II, when we needed a domestic supply of torque wrenches to build the Merlin engines to make sure, uh, in particular, that the, the cylinder head studs were being fastened up properly to avoid cylinder warping and all that stuff. I mean, it's enough to deal with if you're up there in one of those Spitfires being shot at, let alone having to worry about engine failure. So the war effort needed a domestic supply of torque wrenches and Norbar stepped up to the mark. And uh, they've been doing it ever since. It's uh, a family run company. I think it's a guy called Bill Brody who set it up. And I think the, the Brody family are still very much involved in the company, despite the fact that in 2017, they were acquired by a company that you might have heard of called Snap-on. Of course, you've heard of them. So so they are now part of, of Snap-on. But despite the acquisition in 2017, still made here and still key players in the world of torque wrenches. And that's pretty much all they do. It's pretty much all they do. They are absolutely specialists in making this stuff. And they also, I believe, are, a, are a, an OEM for a number of different brands as well. Not entirely sure what ones, but there are a number of brands, I believe, that use the Norbar kind of mechanisms and design inside, although the exterior might look slightly different. Now, to get yourself one of these is going to cost you somewhere in the region of £160, something along those lines. There are people out there trying to sell these things for over £200. You can get deals. I've seen them as low as about 130 and i paid about 100 i think about 130 i've got a, a discount on ebay because they were doing a, a saver thing so i paid about 130 but normally they tend to average in at about 160 so they're not cheap by any stretch of the imagination so anyway i've never used one of these before but i'm assuming i know how it works we have a dial here minimal setting is 10 newton meters or 7.5 pounds foot and I love the fact it says halt here. It's all born out of World War II saying halt. <laughs> That's weird. Anyway, um, assuming that that little popper there unlocks it and we can now go in and we can dial in our desired torque. So say we want to get to 15 Newton meters. This is nice, actually. Feels very good. And then go in, lock it. And now we're good to go. We can put our three eighths socket on the end and go ahead and use it. And it reverses like that. I think they call this the automotive head. Um, they do make some, I think, that actually kind of pop out and then push through back the other way so that you can talk in both directions, but kind of limited use on that for, for bikes. So we've just got a simple switch here. So yeah, that's probably about all you can say about it. I've got loads of uses for this as I'm currently in the midst of rebuilding my BMW R100. There's loads of fasteners that need very specific torque applied to them, uh, such as caliper bolts, brake disc bolts, pinch bolts, all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, you wanna, you wanna have something with a degree of accuracy to make sure you don't accidentally go ahead and strip threads and cause damage and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you also have to be a little bit careful. I, mean, I don't want to get into the rabbit's hole of talking about, you know, how to use these things and, and, and all the kind of opinions on this stuff. But you do have to be a bit careful when you're looking in some of these old books, like the kind of old climbers manuals and things like that. Sometimes they've, they've put some pretty blatant typos in this stuff. I was reading one guy, he uh, talked up his alternator bolts to 35 pounds foot and stripped the whole thing because it should have said, inch pounds oh dear 
And sometimes you run into other things where if you've lubricated your fastener and things like that, and then you go ahead and put the book talk through it, people get surprised when they strip threads, not realizing that lubricating the bolt has just massively increased the kind of clamping force or it's reduced the friction because a lot of these um, fasteners that, you know, you get that click when you hit a certain friction level. So obviously if it's lubricated or if the bolt's dirty, then those specs kind of go way out. So you do need to be a little bit careful. You can't just kind of blindly go into swinging on these things and hoping for the best. You've got to kind of think about what you're doing. But they are very, very useful. And uh, I'm now very pleased to have something of real quality in my collection. I'll keep the SPV unit uh, for smaller fasteners. So that's kind of got me covered in the in the kind of smaller scale. And also when I'm out and about on the road. This guy is going to get retired. So don't know what I'll do with this. We donate it. And I've got the Teng tool for for the bigger projects and all that kind of stuff so um yeah happy days there it is the norbar professional so if you're in the market for one of these things definitely worth checking these out i mean don't take my word for it go and look at some of the forums and general kind of discussions and other youtube videos uh, where people who do this stuff every day engineers mechanics they you know they talk about their experiences with this brand and for the most part i haven't haven't heard anything bad said about them so um they're definitely a, a brand with real kind of credibility and quality behind them and uh, you would imagine doing the same thing day in day out for 80 years you'd get pretty good at it wouldn't you so yeah highly recommended and look out for it on the channel because in the coming videos there is plenty of work to get done on the bm build which would involve some of this stuff so you'll see it on the channel very soon anyway that's it for now thank you very much for watching until the next one Ride safe.